3C is about community, character, and courage. And our mission is to love God and to love people. Let's tune in to this week's sermon. Amen. You ready for the word? It's, uh, it's an honor to be here today. I'm thankful to our pastors, Pastor Mike and Paula, and my parents. Let's give them a hand. We, we love you guys. And uh, my dad is in my neck of the woods in Fairfax, Virginia, one of the churches that uh, he's a part of mentoring in the vision. They're having an anniversary service. So he's up there uh, being a part of that and speaking vision into that church there. They were actually with us on our encounter weekend we just had in Dulles at our Dulles campus. And uh, we had an awesome time. How'd the encounter go here? Was it good? Man? Yeah. And welcome to everybody streaming in and to all my family there at Dulles. We love you guys so much. I'll be back in person uh, tonight, but next week if you only come to church. But if you know where I live, I'll be back home tonight. So don't nobody worry. All right. We we're uh, we're so blessed by the word that we receive. I'm so thankful for the leadership of our church and the word uh, that God brings each week to us. Isn't it a blessing? Who's needed the word? I've needed the word. I've needed to be reminded I'm loved to love. Amen. Because sometimes we think we're loved and we're empowered to do what we want. Because we can get in our feelings pretty quick sometimes. Amen. But but I'm thankful for the word and we're just going to go into it. um, The love to love, born to love series a little deeper today. And I want to just open in prayer. Lord, we thank you uh, for the privilege to be here today. We thank you uh, for speaking your word to us right now. We ask that you would just prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive a word in season. Lord, build us up in our faith, strengthen us to be who you've called us to be. And Lord, help us to leave our legacy. To leave a legacy for you here on this earth, Lord, to bless generations to come with the love of Jesus. And we pray all these things in your name. Amen. 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 So we started off in in this series with the word in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verses 14 through 21, that says, the love of Christ compels us. Everybody say compels. compels. Say compels. So sometimes you might feel lazy and what do you need? You need to be compelled. You might feel like doing something other than what God is asking you to do. But we need to remember the cross, remember the sacrifice, remember the love of God, remember the life that God has given to you. And therefore you can walk in that compelling love of God. Amen. And then if if you read through those verses, it says we don't regard anyone uh, according to the flesh, uh, but according to the the love of God. And and if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away. Look at your neighbor, your wife or your friend, your husband and say, thank you, Jesus. The old has passed away. Anybody thankful for some old stuff that's not hanging around anymore? Amen. And the new is come that there, there's a new life within us when we walk in Christ. And then it tells us in the next several verses, because of that, now all things in our life are of God. Everything you do becomes holy, becomes sanctified, becomes set apart. And all those really spiritual, awesome sounding words just mean you're here for a purpose. When you got saved and and when I gave my life to Jesus, we didn't get zapped straight up to heaven because we're here for what? A purpose. It would have been a lot easier if God would just take us and he do all the work down here. Right. But he has a purpose for our life. He's called us to love. He's loved us. He's revealed his love to us that you could be that same love that you could give that away. And so he's given us, it's called here, the ministry of reconciliation. It's, it says this, it's as though God himself is speaking through you. That's a pretty big deal. If you had a message of somebody pretty important, you take it serious, right? If God himself is saying, hey, I've given you a ministry of reconciliation. I'm trusting you. Somebody say, God, trust me. me. Come on, tell yourself, say, God, trust me. 
He trusts you with the message. He trusts you that you will love the way that he's loved you. And, and that's why we're called God's ambassadors. We can be compelled to love. That means his love controls us and urges us and, and holds our life in a place of, of a purpose. And so we can get to that place where we obey the great commandment, which is to love God and love, unfortunately, you have to love people, right? You can't just say you love God and then you don't love people, right? If you don't love people, the Bible actually tells us you actually don't love God. You might love a made up God that you thought of in your mind <laughs> that, that only loves you and hates everybody else. But God loves all of us. He loves the world for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that we could be saved, that no one should perish. And so that's the heart that we have as a church. And that's a, a uh, constant decision to align yourself with the love of God. It's easy to love people who love you. That's normal. You don't, you don't need a super spiritual moment to love someone and to give to someone who's also giving to you, right? But when you're called to love the way Jesus loved, what does the Bible say? Greater love has no man than he who lays down his life. So we're not talking about a good feeling. If, if God was to ask you, hey, do you love people? And you said, uh, yeah, I love people. And it was just in your mind a thought. Yeah, I, I feel good towards people. I don't want to bother anybody. I want everybody to be able to, you know, live a good life. Being somebody who loves the way that God loves is getting involved. It's laying down your life. Now we've got a problem, right? Because we've got, I've got my life. You know, I got my own problems to deal with, if you didn't know that. I got my own issues. I got my own stuff. I've got my own prayer requests. And now I'm supposed to pray for you. All right now I'm supposed to bless you. I want a blessing, but I need to bless them. And, and we have this conflict within our life like God is calling us. But it's in our faith to go that we see him begin to move in our life. It would be much easier if he would move first and give us all the directions and everything we're going to go through. And we'd be completely prepared for all the maybe OCD tendency type of people that just have to have everything. Unfortunately, God doesn't work that way, right? He's, his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, right? He doesn't turn the lights on and every, it's a spotlight down the road all the time. We don't have all the details, but we know that wherever we're at, what are we called to do? We're called to love. And what does love mean? It means I'm willing to lay down my life. I'm willing to live for someone else. I'm willing to be in need myself and go and meet someone else's need. I'm willing to say, you know what? God has taken care of me. God has been too good to me for me to worry about a temporary problem when I have an eternal solution for others who are in a place of brokenness. And that's what the church is meant to be. Amen. So we love God. We love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We've seen in 1 John chapter 4 um, that, that it says, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God for God is love. So if we're called to love our neighbor, how do we do that? We love people by getting involved. We love people by laying down our life, by sharing the good news of Jesus with others. And so there's an evidence of us being born again. There's an evidence of, of us having that. It, it says uh, everyone who loves God is born of God. And that word born is a word that is connected to generations. Everybody say generations. Like you are the next generation of God. That's his plan with your life. Whatever has existed in your family or in your community, in your nation up until you, God's plan is that you will be his redemption story at work, that, that you will change the generations, that his love, it's not just like sometimes we think we need to get something from God. How many need something from God? You feel like, man, if I could just have these five things and take out these three people, <laughs> and just get this, you know, that, that, we got our list, right? If everything was just like this, 
then life would be good. But the answer is not getting something from God. The answer is God. God is love. The answer is having a relationship, a communion with God, walking with God. It's not coming to church and saying, okay, I got what I need. Now let me go try to work it out. How's that working? Not good, is it? It's frustrating. It's like, I thought when I tried to go to church and get my life right, things would be better. Uh, no, it, it doesn't typically work that way. We need to know that God is with us. So if God is the answer in our life, now who becomes the answer in your family? in the world around you. You are there for a purpose. You are walking with God. You have the answer. Somebody say, God is love. God is love. Say, I am born of God. So I am love. Amen. That's how we want to live. That, that's what we want to, uh, that's how we want to exist, that we would be walking and, and living in the purpose of God. We want to really know him. In 2 Timothy 3, uh, Timothy has a lot of warnings in it. In 2 Timothy 3, 7, it warns about people who are always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So we can come and we can learn and we can have good Bible messages and have good principles and live a life according to the principles of the word of God. And it will have an effect on our life. It will be you will have a better life when you live by God's principles, but you will not have his love until you have him in your heart. You cannot love the way that God loves you unless he's dwelling inside of you. Unless you've been begotten of him, born of him. And so let's, let's be warned of that. In, in 1 Timothy 6, verse 20, it says, O Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babbling and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. So whatever definition we want to make of God or love or whatever it is, the, the Bible teaches us to protect what God has given to you. Protect what God has done in your life. Protect the testimony of what God has, has done for you. Don't give up because things are difficult. There's a lot that God's already done that you could lose. Sometimes we feel, well, I might as well just give up. I might as well just quit because I'm, I'm facing this obstacle. And, and I get it. Life can, can hit us unexpectedly. But God has done so much in your life for you to quit. Why would you quit now? God has brought you so far and, and God is a God of victory. Amen. He's a God of overwhelming victory. That's your story. That's who you are. You're a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Amen. So the, the Bible tells us 1 John 4, 19, it says we love him because he first loved us. Right. We love if someone says I love God and hates his brother. He is a help me out. Don't make me say it. Shout it out. He's a liar, right? All right, I said it too. If, if someone says, I love God, and he hates his brother, the Bible says he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him that he who loves God must love his brother also. Amen. Somebody say love. love. So we're called to lay down our life. Our purpose is to live for others. Our purpose is to lay down uh, our life that others can receive. And how do we do this? How do we get to that place? Well, in, in chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, it says, Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, that means we believe Jesus is who he says he is. We don't just believe he's a good person. We don't believe that it's just for my uh, nice gold necklace that I have. Or my, my new ink that I got, my nice Jesus cross, you know, that reminds me I can do all things through Christ, through strengthens me. And what I really mean is I'm just strong and I'm going to lift weights and I want to look tough and be Christian, right? I'm not, I'm not ragging on you. But, but sometimes we think these things that, uh, you know, it's a symbol or it's just, but it has to be a reality of our heart. It has to sink into a place where it changes your life, where it changes how you live and what you do and the way that you think. And it's when we believe that Jesus is the Christ that we are born of God. So if you believe something, 
then you act on it, right? If we believe that there, if we believe there's danger in our home, we don't just keep laying there and sleep because it was a really long day, right? It's like, that's how some of us believe in Jesus. Like, I believe in Jesus, but, you know, it's been a long week. I'm chilling this week. I'm not reading my Bible. I don't need to pray. But you've got an enemy that, that you know that it wants to come and steal and kill and destroy, and you'd rather sleep than pray. And, and we'd, we'd rather be distracted than get into the word and study it at night. It's, it's time that we, we stir ourselves and wake ourselves up. And sometimes we go through these seasons where we can get complacent and we need to shake ourselves up and say, I need, I'm born for a purpose. I need to be focused. I need to be ready. And, and when that danger is there, we act on it. When you believe that Jesus is the Christ and that you are a representative of representative of him that means you need to prepare yourself for what you're going to say today or you're going to mess it up amen tell somebody don't mess it up we we need to pray like if i'm going to speak for god trust me god you don't want me just saying what i think it's going to be probably funny but it's not going to be right <laughs> you know amen so we, we need to prepare our hearts to, to be used by God, to, to really believe. You know, if, if I believe, then I'm going to act on it. And it says, everyone who loves him, who begot also loves who is begotten of him, which is a really cool way of saying you love God's kids. Right. You love the, the family of God. You you love people. When when we get together, we have the same DNA. Right. We, we, we're not connected because of our culture or because of our color or because of where we come from. We're connected because of our God. We are family because of the DNA of God within us. And that's why the greatest unity that there is, is in the real church of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're, we are born of the same spirit and that same love. And it says, by this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You know, something's only a burden if it doesn't have a purpose. If you're in war, you've got to carry a lot of gear, but it doesn't feel like a burden to you because it's protecting you, because it's your means of living. It's your means of staying alive. If you're carrying something and you don't know its purpose, you might be more likely to just set it aside. I don't want it. This, this is, I don't want to be told what to do. Religion is, is not for me. You know, I'm just, just going to live a good life. And that's not what the commandments of God are about. The commandments of God are not so God says, oh, you're a good boy. Aren't you a good person? Oh, look at her. She's so cute. You can come to heaven. Come on in. You know, God's not just the, you know, big. Uh, I don't want to say that. <laughs> it was funny, but it wasn't from God. <laughs> If you pay me after the service, I'll tell you the joke. <laughs> but, but God's not just playing games. He says, I place before you life and death. The commandments of God are for our life. It's to bring life to us. It's that we would get it. Sometimes we're a little slow. It's like God's like, come on now. Get, get this thing. Life, death. And we're like, hmm. <clears throat> Thanks for the option. Yeah, let me think. Let me think about this. For, no, life. Choose life. And, and that's why when we read the word, when we look at the commandments of God and it should confront you, it should. There should be things that you disagree with. But the, the option is to walk away from it or it's to allow the word to change you. Say, God, I don't get this. I don't understand. I'm not. This isn't. I, I don't have the, the understanding here. Help me. Holy Spirit, change my heart. Give me the understanding. What, why do I need this in my life? Why do I need to live this way? And you know what? Sometimes you start walking it by faith and the understanding will come later. And you, you, that's how we live. And, and that's why Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by 
hearing and hearing the word of God. Strengthen your faith. Don't just keep talking about or thinking about how, man, I'm, my, my faith is weak. I'm go, you know, get to the word. You know what is going to strengthen you. Get to God's presence. Get to a place of prayer. And that's, that's what it says in, in that last verse in 1 John. 1 John 5, verse 4, it says, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So our faith, strengthening our faith, is going to get us to a place where we can live this way. And so what are you, I want to ask you, what are you hearing? If the word of God is strengthening your faith, if hearing the word of God is strengthening your faith, there's got to be things that you hear that could potentially weaken your faith. There's got to be things that your flesh is probably drawn to that is not, it's not helping your situation. It's not helping you be the husband that you've been called to be, to be the father, to be the leader, the mother, to be the world changer that God's called you to and to be. And sometimes we have the dream of God. We have a vision for our future, but we don't have the faith to start walking in it because we listen to the wrong things, to the wrong people. We listen to ourself, our old self, who's insecure and who is prideful and has all these things going on when God has called us to crucify the flesh and start living a life of faith. Amen? Come on, somebody say our faith. faith. Our faith is how we're going to get through it. Our faith is how we're going to conquer. It's through faith in God and we need his word in our life. So ask yourself, what are you listening to? What is speaking into your life? Who are you allowing to have influence in your life? The Proverbs says the fear of man is a deadly trap. If you're so concerned what people think about you, the enemy is going to use that to set a trap for you. You're going to get set up. He's good at it. You've been resisting him however long you've been a believer, but he's been a devil for a long time. So don't try to play games and think you can pick and choose the word of God. No, take the word and take your stand and be fully armed against the enemy and you will see victory in your life. Amen. Philippians 3, verse 13, it says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have, a, uh, to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Come on, say one thing. one thing. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God of Jesus Christ. That, that takes energy. That takes effort. It takes something to do what God has called you to do. It can't just be, oh, by the way, hope it happens. You know, God, I'm ready. And, and we leave it at that. No, we have, to, we have to lay down our life. Do you think the, the Apostle Paul had that attitude? Well, if, if it happens, we'll see. We'll see how many churches we can get started. I'm just going to sit here. No, there, there, there was a faith to go. There, there was a heart that was listening to the Holy Spirit, what to speak, what to do, where to go, how to live his life, how, and to be transformed, forgetting the past. You're not going to be transformed into all that God has called you to be if you're hung up on the past, whether your past is awesome or it's awful. It's the past. You can't hang your hat on it. You can't disqualify yourself because you failed in the past. The Bible is telling you, forget about it. Learn from it, assess it, and then let it go. Let's move forward. Let's have vision. Let's be who God's called us to be. Amen? So we press towards that goal. Um, we, don't, we don't need to ask all the time, hey, you know, how's that make you feel? How, how are, you know, what, what do you think about, uh, who cares? <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying don't, you know, we, we, care, we should care about people. But, but at the end of the day, if that's all we're going to talk about, then nothing's going to change. How I feel and how, what I think. And yeah, think, 
the world's nuts and it feels terrible sometimes. You know that? Okay. Now, what does God have to say about it? What are we going to do? What's the, rem the remedy? Is not my feelings? The, I'm not going to get over what I'm feeling by sitting in what I'm feeling. I have to move forward. I have to handle that and say, you know what, God, give me faith to start walking and moving. Amen. So 2 Corinthians 10, let's wrap this up. 2 Corinthians 10 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war and fight according to the flesh. For our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. So if you're going to do something great for God, you've got to use the weapons that he's given you. We, we have to learn to take correction and keep moving. Moving. Amen. Uh, if, if you heard Pastor Bert share the word last week, he spoke about how people will shut down when they get corrected. When you shut down in war, that's very dangerous. When you shut down and there is a purpose for your life and people are depending on you and you're offended and all weird over something that if you just said, OK, yeah, you know what? I do need to change. And then you're ready for the battle. Correction, on the other side of correction, is your miracle. On the other side of receiving correction and rebuke and challenge from the word of God and from your leaders and from brothers and sisters in Christ, if you would just humble yourself, you're not going to get to God without humility. You're not going to become close to God without being humble and saying, you know what, I need to change. I need correction. I need, I need that within my life. So don't shut down. Learn from it. Uh, yearn for that correction within your life. And know that in all things we are more than conquerors for him who loved, through him who loved us. Amen? All right. So we, we know that we need to love. We are born to love. And it's through our faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. The Amplified says that we, we walk by faith and not by the sight of appearance or exterior things or our emotions or circumstances. Because if I can, if I'm willing to change my purpose and what I'm called to do based on my circumstances and my emotions and my and anything physically happening, then I will never be consistent with God because life is not going to give me what I want each day. I'm not going to be dealt a good hand every day. You know, I'm not going to, we're not going to have the perfect life. Did you know that? We're going to go through some things and life is going to, sometimes it's just little frustrating things that can throw you off. And sometimes life hits you with a ton of bricks. Whatever it is, we need to know that my purpose is not contingent on these things. My purpose will actually be fueled by that. Throughout history, when the church is persecuted, it explodes. It grows. It, it changes the world. It goes out further. And so we're not, we're not living by sight. We're not living. We're not here just to try to get a good life from God. Thank God for everything he's done good in my life. Thank God for every blessing. Thank God for the country we have and, and the way that we've been able to live and worship and freedom and, and all those things. We're thankful. But my faith isn't contingent on that because I very well could have been born in the Middle East. And on the same globe in the same year that we're living right now, people have a completely different experience than we've had. And so it's not the experience that defines us. It's the faith. If any situation can change your stance on God, then you don't have a stance on God. You don't have a connection. You don't have a faith. And, it, and we need to know that, that when we waver, when we go through those things, when we go through the testing of our faith and we see, man, my faith's too weak for this. The good thing is, is you have a God that will minister to you, that will build you up. His word is there for you to speak life. His word says in Jeremiah that he says, before I, I even formed you, I knew you. Before I, you, you were formed, I knew you in the womb. Before you were uh, born, I consecrated you. So before you were ever, you know, before you were even in your mother's womb, you, ex you existed. Before your memory can even serve you, you, God knew you. 
He had a plan for your life. Before you, uh, before you were born, God says he set you apart, which means God has a purpose for you and you can't destroy it. You can't, as long as you have breath in your life, the, the call of God is not going to be removed from your life. God's calling you today. God's saying, you know, the purpose that I have for your life, it's still there. Love somebody. Love the people of the world. Love the way that God has loved you. He says, I've appointed you as a prophet. His assignment is over your life. His assignment is there. His appointment for your life is, is set. Amen? You can't change it. You can't, you can't change God's mind. And we know that Jesus came to the world for a purpose. He came that he said to Pilate in John 18, verse 37, Pilate says, so you are a king. And Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. And for this purpose, I was born. And for this purpose, I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Jesus came to redeem us. Jesus came and, his, you know, we're, we're speaking about walking in faith. What happened to the feet of Jesus on the cross? They nailed him there. His feet were nailed to the cross. And why did Jesus allow that to happen? Why, why would the Son of God be allowed to be nailed to a cross? His feet to be nailed. Without your feet, you can't go anywhere. Your feet represent your purpose. Your feet represent everywhere you go. And when Jesus' feet were nailed, that blood that was shed for you, that, that blood represents your purpose being redeemed, your purpose being restored back to what, whatever it's, whatever's been lost, whatever, whatever you, wherever you've been, wherever your feet have taken you, maybe some dark places, maybe you've walked off the path, for a while, God's calling us today to come back to the path of purpose, to come back to a place of salvation, to come back to a place of true redemption, of truly surrendering our lives to him. That's a life that God can use. Not a perfect life, not somebody who can't even realize that they're a sinner. God can't start working with me until I acknowledge my sin until I realize that I'm a sinner, that I need his grace, that the cross was for me. And so with, with that in mind, today we as a church, we've been called to love the world. Amen? Tell somebody you're loved. Come on, tell them like you mean it. Say you're loved to love the world. You're born to love. Amen? Are you blessed by the word today? Awesome. We want to thank everybody for connecting with us online today. Thank you again. Love everybody there in Dulles. I'm going to turn it over to the team there and uh, turn it over to our studio here for all our online viewers. If uh, church, we just want to give them a hand. We love you guys. Awesome. What an awesome message on born to love. And I'm so thankful for, um, you know, God equipping me to love. And so today we're so thankful that you joined with us, that you decided to watch the service and so, but before you leave, we have a question for you. And, and the question is, is, is your heart right with Jesus? You know, we can hear a good message and we can want to change, but just like Justin said, until we're born of the Spirit of God, nothing changes. And so that simply starts by accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior, allowing him to come and live on the inside and lead and guide our life. And so today... If that's you and you've never accepted Jesus or maybe maybe you've walked away from God, maybe you used to attend a church and you know, you've know you backslidden, I wanna pray with you as well. And it's simply, we have to get to a place where we simply turn our hearts back to God, where we just simply surrender. We say, God, I don't understand everything, but you know, it has to get from up here to down here. You know, those six, seven inches can make a hell of a difference, literally. And so we accept Jesus into our hearts, not our heads. We don't have to understand everything. And so if that's you today and you feel Jesus is tugging on your heart and you know you need to get your heart right with him, then I want you to pray after me. Say, dear Jesus, thank you that you died for me. Thank you that you were nailed to a cross, that you were whipped, that you were beaten 
so that I could be made brand new. And Lord, today, I ask you to come into my life, to take control where there's chaos, and give me a new beginning. Lord, I accept you today as my Lord, Lord, and my Savior. And so from this day on, I am born again in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining with us today. And if that's you, and you prayed that prayer with me today, I want you to do me one more thing, and that's click on the link in the comments to connect with us. We'll have one of our pastors call you and pray with you, but you have to click on the link and, and send us your details, or you can click on the phone number and give us a call or send us a text message. We want to minister to you on a personal basis. It's not just something you watch on the internet, but we want to connect with you face to face. So Lord, we thank you for every viewer today, Jesus, and Lord, I pray your blessing over them. Amen.